inshaAllah we get to the qasa and the story of Sayyidina Musa salam meeting with Sayyidina Khidr salam. And inshaAllah before that Allah gives a short version of when Allah taught the names and the reality to Sayyidina Adam and the fall from grace because this is the reality of inside the cave, the danger from outside and running from difficulties. And then Allah brings the example of, of Allah of uh, Sayyidina Adam, shaitan and the angels and just always we teach by an example very quickly so people can understand, they can read later, go deeper into its understandings. And the reality that in this before the reality of guidance and meeting with the reality of Sayyidina Khidr Allah is warning by the story of Sayyidina Adam that how the angels were taught knowledges and that the knowledges they taught were influencing their character. So that Allah wanted to give them an understanding the angels who were acquiring and acquiring the knowledge that not only the knowledge that is important but more important is the character in which the person whom is conveying the knowledge. That the, the water is pure but the cup can be poisoned and that you take not only the knowledge that someone conveys to you but you take their character, you take their, their demeanor. And that's what Allah was showing to the angels that no doubt these knowledges are impressive but let me teach you a little bit about akhlaq and he commanded bow down. Brought the reality of Sayyidina Adam salam, taught knowledges, Sayyidina Adam began to speak and say, you should be astonished by these knowledges. And then Allah told the angels for ihtiram and respect to Sayyidina Adam, I want you to bow in respect to his presence because of the uloom and the knowledges. So here in this month of knowledge, Subhanahu Ma Alim Al Hakim, Allah saying, how important knowledges are that when I sent that secret of knowledge into Sayyidina Adam salam, that I asked my angels because I'm going to test them now with what they thought they were being taught, I asked them to bow down to this knowledge and to the presence of Sayyidina Adam salam, and they had to bow to the presence of Sayyidina Adam salam, and they called it uh, ihtiram. It was the sujood of ihtiram. So there is such a thing of bowing in respect and Allah is giving the example of that in Holy Qur'an. And all the angels bowed except Iblis and those whom taught by Iblis. And the angels astonished, they looked out of fear that he is not bowing and they bowed again. And that's why in our salah we have two sujoods. We go down, we come up and then we go down again. But the importance of that was Allah wanted to show that the, the knowledge you're getting from an arrogant teacher, he's giving the character inside and that character was inf influencing their demeanor because angels don't question. So later when angels began to open their mouth and say that, how you made this creation to be your khalifa when they're going to create much bloodshed on earth. So that's a big no-no for angels. And why they had that characteristic is because the uloom and the knowledges they were getting was from the tainted reality of iblis, of shaitan. And that's the danger that Allah is saying, in this seeking of knowledges, and the immensity of the reality of knowledges that not only the knowledge is important but they have to have a teaching of khuluq and character. 
Because the character is the glass in which you're going to convey this knowledge to people. If the character is mean then all the students will have a mean demeanour. If the character is arrogant then all the knowledges will make all the students to be arrogant. So means the, the glass in which we drink from is as important as what's within the glass. Because either people are going to take the knowledges with the good character when Allah is not only impressed by what He's giving to Prophet but say, khuluq al azim that your khuluq is of Allah's azim, of immensity of greatness I put within your, your character and that's what this is emphasizing right before we, we go into the reality of guidance in this month of knowledge. So this is the cave of knowledge, this is the cave of hayat and eternity. This is the fountain of eternal youth because the youth and the hayat, the eternity of the ever living is based on knowledge. So Divinely knowledge and seeking of knowledge and the reality of, of energy and, and energy power within the soul, its byproduct is the knowledges of the Divine. These are the angels that are flowing from an energy ocean. If somebody has energy or claims to have a power but they have no knowledge, that's not the same reality because this Bahr al-Hayat is an angelic source from Divinely Presence. When the Bahr al-Hayat and the ocean of eternity begins to open its mouth all realities of angels are coming through and these are the uloom and the knowledges and that's why it's represented by hay. Means in 18 and why the importance of the 18, 18 represents hayat. Ha is 8, ya is 10. So when we say hay it's symbolized by the number of 18. So then the, the second month is the secret of 18, 18th surah, Surah Al-Kahf. Hayat and eternity has to do with the secret of Surah Al-Kahf. Anyone looking for the fountain of eternity it's located in Surah Al-Kahf. And that's why then this whole surah is about entering into this fountain of eternity and understanding the realities of the fountain of eternity. So the ha of hay is the actual reality of hayat and Allah's eternal oceans. But attached to the hay is a ya. And we taught that in the secrets of Surah Al Yaseen, ya is the secret for all knowledges. That from the alif all the way in the regular Arabic, Arabic alphabet goes all the way to ya. Anyone whom Allah give these 28 huruf with each letter Allah gives them the secret, they have the secret of these kalam because with these 28 letters you move them around and these are the secrets of our spoken language, these are the secrets of this spoken word. So anyone whom Allah want to bestow upon them from the oceans of sainthood and knowledge, Allah make these 28 and 29 with lam alif, 28 letters to fill their heart. So each letter is represented by angels that enter into their soul and fill their reality. As a result Allah grants them this high, grants them the ya. That every from all the way from alif to the ya is given to them as a result we described when you write the ya it contains all the way from the ya all the way to the alif all encapsulated is all uloom in ya. So when Allah want to give the servant knowledges He grants them the reality of ya into their soul and that every letter with all its angelic realities enters into their soul and begins to teach them. So that when they merely look 
at these letters of Qur'an the angel within its reality begins to teach them and inspire within their heart that this alif is for this reality, this ya is for this reality, this ha is for this reality because these are all like the mixing elements of Allah's Divinely Kingdom. So Hai is contained by Allah's ocean of eternity and attached to it Allah granted the ocean of knowledges. That's why in this month of Safar Alimul Hakim that Allah saying that in this month when you go into this fountain of eternity I've attached to it ancient knowledges. That's why when Sayyidina Musa salam wanted of a higher understanding he went to one of the servants who reached eternity and that servant is known for immensity of knowledges. That's how you're connecting 18 and the ocean of Hayat, this is a, a, a reality of above that cave is, is like a Hayat saying this is a fountain of eternity. You drink from this you become eternal, not that you walk on the earth eternally, nobody wants to, to live forever on this earth but their soul becomes an eternal soul. Their uloom and their knowledges of which they speak have no time and they're of a powerful eternity that as soon as somebody hears it they'll be dressed from it, they'll be living it, breathing it and drinking from it. So the immensity of that ocean of eternity is dressing them. And then Allah is describing then in this, in this parda, in this hijab the dressing upon Sayyidina Muhammad is then Alimun Hakim that these are the, the reality and the way towards Divinely knowledges and hikmah and wisdom. And then the meeting with Sayyidina Khidr, inshaAllah we can recite uh, from Surat Al-Kahf 60 verse 60 to 65 inshaAllah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذ قال موسى لفتاه لا حتى أبلغ مجمع البحرين أو أمديه قباب فلما بلغ مجمع بينهما نسيا حوتهما فاتخذا سبيله في البحر سربا فلما جاوزا قال لفتاه واتنا غدا لقد لقينا من سفرنا هذا نصبا قال أرأيت إذ أبينا إلى الصخرة فيلي نسيت الحوت وما أنسانيه إلا الشيطان أن أذكره 
وَاتَّخَذَ سَبِيلَهُ فِي الْبَحْرِ عَجَبًا قَالَ ذَلِكَ مَا كُنَّا نَبْغِ فَارْتَدَّ عَلَى آثَارِهِمَا قصصا فوجد عبدا من عبادنا آتيناه رحمة من عندنا وعلمناه من لدنا صدق الله العلي العظيم صدق الله العظيم وبرك في رسول الكريم that the immensity of ayat al-kareem that Allah Zawajal mentioned to Sayyidina Musa salam said to his servant I will not cease travelling until I reach the junction of the two seas and we said before the two seas is the reality of La ilaha illallah connecting to Muhammadun Rasulullah That I want these knowledges and these realities but when they reach the junction between them they forgot the fish. There was a fish that had been fried ready to be eaten, they forgot that fish and it took its course in a slippery way into the sea. And when they went and passed beyond, Moses said to Yeshua, the, the boy that was accompanying him, bring us this meal that we have and we certainly have uh, tired and hungry on this journey. And when they put that cooked fish on the rock, it came to life, it came to life and went into the ocean. Yeshua then clarified for him and he said, did you see that when we went to that rock indeed I forgot and I put the fish, none other than shaitan made me to forget to tell you that I should have mentioned it and that it took its course and went into the sea amazingly. Because the translation is not very good in English, but he says, it's ajeeb, the, sh- the fish came to life and went into the water. And nothing but shaitan made me to forget to tell you this event that's happening. <laughs> and then they found, then he said, okay, oh, no, Moses said that this is what we were seeking. For verily this, the sign that you're describing of a dead coming to life, this is what I was looking for. So the, let us return and follow our footsteps and, and find where that rock was where the fish came to life. And there they found one of Allah's servants, Abdan min ibadina whom attained the rahmah, this is again in this tariqah and the way of haqqaiqs, this is the formula for reaching realities. It's not what they're doing now but the way that Allah wants it is that they attain the rahmah first. So they have to be in the schools of how to attain rahmah which is how to attain the nearness to the character, the love and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad For what is the rahmah of Allah other than the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad One of our servants whom we had given and attained the rahmah and we taught from him knowledges of certainty. وَعَلَّمَهُ مِنْ لَدُونَ عَالِمًا that he, that 
taught from our presence these ilma laduni wa hikmati bi salihin because this is the month of knowledge. And this is what Sayyidina Musa wanted, that he wanted of a higher reality. That speaking all his life and in, in his risala to Allah through a parda, through a veil and still wanting to seek a higher reality knowing that there is a higher reality than from his nation's reality. And he wanted from the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and the immensity of that reality. So then he sets off that I will go where these two rivers meet, take a physical journey to reach my spiritual reality. And that's why we are saliks in the path, we are people who walk on a daily basis struggling, each struggle is opening a Divine reality. So you move on earth busying yourself, going through your family difficulties, life difficulties, work difficulties and Allah's opening something from paradise. And then teaching for us that what type of reality are we going to be reaching, Sayyidina Musa is walking and they passed it. So that how come they didn't see Sayyidina Khidr sitting there? They came to a point in which Allah is then giving a sign for believers that don't think it's going to be obvious to meet one of these rijal where they just sit there with like a feather in their hair and, hi I'm going to bring you to life. He walked, he passed and passed even the miracle. So the first walk in it and the first direction of it Allah is then teaching a sign of it is Bahrul Hayat. That these servants they have the ability to revive the dead. Their mere presence you don't even have to see them for he didn't even see him. But those whom are attentive and looking and, and searching for the reality they should witness things coming to life. That there's a force of life all around them, all their knowledges and all their teachings that you merely read it, absorb it, begin to enter into it and it begin to revive the heart. It brings that which is dead back to life in Allah's way. That which is dead in dunya and wants to come back to life only for the sake of dunya, no they're not talking about that. They're talking about when the situation is of a emptiness and they're yearning for the reality of Allah they're yearning for their soul's reality, Allah then directs them into these fountains. And as soon as they pass by that fountain whatever knowledges they take from them, whatever they read from them, whatever video they watch from them, whatever book they read from them, these are fountains of life flowing through. And as a result of that fountain of life flowing through to them their soul comes alive, muhi al qulub and this is from the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Mahid wal muhi al qulub the one whom revives everything because Sayyidina, Sayyidina Khidr represents the, the green shaykh. Why green? Because of resurrection. Sayyidina Khidr is in the Naqshbandi tariqah, in the golden chain of Naqshbandiya and his secret is flowing through the Naqshbandi shaykhs on this earth. That same Muhammadan dress and the representation of Prophet that's why they said wear green in this month. Why wear green in this month? Because this is the month of knowledges and resurrection. This is the month of Sayyidina Khidr uh, conveying knowledges to the souls of people. That as soon as you remember these awliyaullah Sayyidina Abbas Qadr as salam these knowledges are flowing, their lights are flowing into the servants that have that love and seeking that reality. And they're asking to be dressed by these knowledges and Allah is saying then the first sign 
because you, you didn't yet train yourself to see them because that's why the first pass you go is then the sign of knowledge, of light, of life. Everything comes alive, the associations are alive, their faces are alive, their energies are alive, everything is just shining from them and those whom are with them. Everywhere you go is, is, a, is, a, is a living event because this Bahr al-Hayat from the heart of Prophet is flowing. Every knowledge that been taught is a fountain of eternity upon the soul of the one whom is absorbing that reality. Then later they went, retraced their footsteps and then saw Sayyidina Khidr and saw the reality of it. And then Allah clarified that they met one of our servants that is not the only one. Means that with what type of training that we come back and in our heart and on our connection and our tafakkur then Allah says that that time if you connect your heart you'll know who you're connecting with. You'll see that servant who had attained the rahmah and as a result attained the rahmah the knowledges he teaches you is from the knowledges of who? Because the reality of that who, wa'allamahu is that alamahu <laughs> who is giving the alam and the ilm. So they are who men whom in the presence of who is conveying these knowledges. But that can't be seen with a dunya eye, you just pass them and say, I don't see this person as anything. But these are for the people whom they sit and they train and they connect their heart. They purify their heart, they, they leave the station of heedlessness and they witness it. And that's what's important is that they begin to connect and witness. And Allah then is describing for us, this is a fountain of life. These knowledges coming from this cave and from this reality of Sayyidina Muhammad are the fountains of all eternity and all realities. And then Sayyidina Musa salam in that connection because this is the unseen guide. Sayyidina Khidr was unseen, that's why they passed him on the first pass. Later they came back with more carefulness and in the carefulness means then this is a isharat for us is then in our life we make our connection, we have to make the connection. When we make the connection we begin to understand who are we? in an association with. What are these lights and what are these realities? Because Allah is then saying we're becoming heedless, we don't understand what we're doing, we don't understand who we're with, we don't understand the knowledges that are coming and by the time you do understand it may be too late in our lives. That's why this way of tafakkur and contemplation is to contemplate so that these knowledges can be conveyed. And may I Sayyidina Musa may I follow you on a condition that you teach me from what you have been taught, not of sound judgment is in the English but rushidan, the rushd. And that these knowledges and these realities they rushd, they bring and ripen a person towards the oceans of perfection because these are the schools of adab and they teach these realities that ripen and perfect the character and the reality of the person. From their inner being being perfected with lights and knowledges so that that inner being can perfect their outer appearance. So it's more focused on the inner reality. Naqshbandiya is in the school of the inner reality that they should be focusing on the uloom and the knowledges and the character that reaching to the soul and when the soul is empowered, enlightened and taught then that powerful soul can begin to discipline the physicality. So they're not like other places where they just work on the physicality and everybody is just you know in a physical thing, they look really good but they don't know anything. So the, this reality 
from Sayyidina Khidr that passed all the way down to Sayyidina Naqsh, Mawlana Shah Naqshaban through all of our shaykhs to Mawlana Shaykh is that the inner connection that they attain the rahmah that their inner soul is in the presence and connected to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad As a result of that rahmah then they be taught these uloom and these knowledges and then their outer reality will become perfected as a result of that. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamu ala mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.